traditionally speaking, you could either invest for cash flow or for appreciation, right? It's, it feels like it's a one or the other, right? Is it ever possible to have your cake and eat it too? Can you get both cash flow and appreciation? That's what I want to talk to you guys about right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James. I will be your host, your guide, your guru, your coach, your real estate aficionado, right? That's what I do here, right? That's what I do. I help people invest in real estate, right? If you want to invest in real estate, I think a lot of the stuff we do on Holton Wise TV uh, teaches you how to do that wherever you live. And if you want to go one step further and partner, partner with me directly, my team, uh, you could do so if you want to invest in the Cleveland market, right? And that's kind of what Brings me to what I want to talk about today. My friggin' nose is itching, man. Woo! All right. What I want to talk about today is Cleveland, is turnkey, is appreciation, is cash flow, right? Okay, you got a lot of out-of-state, out-of-country investors, right? And that's who we work with quite often because they come to Cleveland for cash flow. And that's why my man Hassan is doing, right? Hassan, you're from Toronto, right? Toronto, Canada, okay? And traditionally people, we've worked with a lot of people from Toronto, traditionally people like that, they come to Cleveland because you can get cash flow in Cleveland you can't get in Toronto. Same thing with California folks, New York folks, right? A lot of folks from Oregon as well, right? Colorado too. A lot of those people come here to partner with us to get that cash flow, to get the cash flow in Cleveland, Hassan. But I can do both, right? Typically you don't come to Cleveland for appreciation, but I could do both. And I'm going to do so with my absolute, most favorite kind of investment. So we're going to get my favorite kind of investment, my favorite kind of multifamily property in the entire world, cash flow and appreciation. All for you, Hassan. That's what we're doing. Folks, if you like what we're about to do, what you're going to see me and Hassan do, and you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one to do the same, bada-bing, bada-boom. There's the email. Shoot us your contact info or click the show notes below. We will hop on the phone with you, talk to you about how to get working with me one-on-one -on -one like Hassan's doing because this video – I sent this to him privately months ago. So this property you're about to see, it's only uh, it's only been published on Holton Wise TV for educational uh, entertainment purposes, right? This deal is no longer available. So don't call me like, no, oh, buy a private one by Franklin. It's gone, dog. It's gone. That's how you get with me in real time, right? So without further ado, let's talk about the property, why I love the property, how you're going to get cash flow, how you can get appreciation, how we can work that out for you, Hassan, right now. Welcome back, folks. This, this property has me excited. What we're talking about today has me thrilled, right? People come to this market, to the Cleveland market, to work with me because they want cash flow, right? They can't get the cash flow in expensive places, right? California, Canada, New York, Oregon, right? Cash flow is tough, right? But traditionally... You invest in those markets for appreciation. And then markets like mine, like Cleveland, like Detroit, like Memphis, like Indianapolis. These are markets, Milwaukee, that are typically looked at as your cash flow markets. You don't go there for appreciation. You go there for cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, right? That's the correct assessment. I am not on the show telling anybody out there that Cleveland is is like the appreciation destination of the world. It's not, okay? It's not the Sun Belt. It's in the Midwest, right? Traditionally speaking, 
you're not going to see major population growth in the Midwest. It's not how it works, right? Uh, so it will never be an appreciation market. That said, there are areas of the air of the Cleveland market that you can get appreciation, and I'm sure that's the same for all those other turnkey markets I mentioned. But like, I'm here in Cleveland, and I've sold 200 million dollars worth of real estate in Cleveland. So we're going to focus on what I'm an expert on in a deal right here that highlights all of that. Okay, I like this deal for many many reasons. 6911 Franklin Boulevard, Cleveland, 44102. It's been on the market for 34 days, and it's overpriced. It's overpriced, but we're going to work on that. 495K. This is in, like, one of the hottest friggin' neighborhoods you can get in Cleveland. Like, dude, this is where you want to be. We're doing, like, luxury Airbnbs, and we could possibly maybe one day turn this into an Airbnb, double up that return probably. Uh, but I, I prefer right now we're sticking with just single-family Airbnbs, right? And I don't want to turn it into a situation where we turn, like, one unit into an Airbnb and then long-term tenants and the rest. I think that would be problematic, but the idea is out there. But what we're talking about right here is Detroit Shoreway. This is, like, one of the most badass neighborhoods in Cleveland, right? When people talk about resurgence of Cleveland and they talk about the happening things, the gentrification, right? The neighborhoods, those are happening in the biggest neighborhoods in Cleveland. Edgewater, Detroit Shoreway, Ohio City, Tremont. One, two, three, four. Those are the four on the west side. And then if you cruise over to the east side, you also got some, some gnarly areas, right? University Circle, totally gnarly. And then you got, uh, I got to zoom in a little bit so you can see it, but Little Italy, right next to University Circle. Like this, this whole little... All this jazz. I mean, University Circle has got their own police force. I mean, that's this is all good stuff, too, right? So if you're on the east side, it's those two. If you're on the west side, it's the ones I mentioned, right? And they're doing a lot of stuff in these neighborhoods to make gentrification happen, right? They're doing tax abatements on new construction, right? People are getting 15-year tax abatements, right? You buy a crummy house, tear it down, build a new house, you don't pay taxes on it for 15 years. They're forcing that stuff because they want this gentrification. So the city's like behind these neighborhoods. And because of that, we're seeing huge, huge increases in property values, right? You can buy single family new construction homes in this neighborhood for like five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars right now, right? So if you're gonna invest in Cleveland, you're doing so for the cash flow. But if you wanna hop on an appreciation train, you need to be in a path of progress neighborhood. You need to be in an area like this where there's things popping, right? Ain't nobody building new construction housing in the C-grade neighborhoods of Cleveland, right? If you guys watch my show for any period of time, we do a lot of Section 8 investing, okay? A lot of it, right? Like, old Brooklyn's a popular neighborhood. Like, all these, like, areas where you can buy duplexes for, like, 100 k right? Those are not areas right now that people are building new construction homes, right? These are those areas, right? So if you're really trying to pop upon the appreciation bandwagon, these are the proven neighborhoods. Now, with that said, though, Clark Fulton, the Metro Health area, I think that's going to be the next one because there's a lot of money coming into there. There's like billions of dollars going into there. Uh, Metro Health is doing a billion dollars. Transit Authority just did like another 60 million or something. So like, and that borders. It's just south of all these neighborhoods that have already like hit the the mark with five hundred thousand dollar houses right so areas like this you already get huge rents high quality tenants that way neighborhood in my opinion is the next one on the way right so here what we have here this is a very good opportunity it's a four unit apartment building four unit apartment buildings are my favorite type of investment of all time because the financing is so butter! Ah! Financing, man. That's why I like real estate as an investment vehicle, dude. Like, first of all, like, I don't, like, love real estate, like, just in general of, like, I mean, I love real estate. But, like, I don't love it because, like, I love houses. And I'm just like, oh, my God, look at the architecture. And I want to, like, hug this fucking house like I care right now. I love real estate because it's an investment vehicle, right? But if I thought I could make more money uh doing something else i would do that right but with real estate what really attracted me to real estate was you can work your day job and invest in real estate right you could do it part-time you could do it passively you could do it out of state right hard to do a lot of other businesses like that and then the financing you put down a quarter the bank puts down three quarters and they let you take that for 30 years fixed interest low interest greatest financing in the world but that's the thing with that financing there's two downsides it's residential financing where you do 25 
bank does 75 and you get 30 years to pay it down the two downsides are you only get 10 of those number one number two it's got to be on single family homes duplexes triplexes quads so if you're Putting the math together in your head, that means the quad is the biggest building you can get with the amazing financing. Once you go to a five unit, your financing sucks. It's terrible. Uh, it's not good, right? I mean, it's not like the end of the world, right? But if you haven't exhausted 10 mortgages, there'd be no reason to do some crummy financing with like a five-year uh, call, like a 25-year AM variable rate interest rate and down payments with the way pricing is in 2021 of probably like 40 to 65% down. Like, screw that. 25% down 30 years. That's where it's at, baby. Right here. So, love that. And uh, what this is, this is a long-time landlord. Long time. He's owned this thing for a long, long, long time. Bought it before the neighborhood was popping. Before you could buy houses for half a million, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000. This dude bought it, ran it as like a low-income property, right? For freaking ever, okay? He's got one vacant unit. And then he's got a bunch of low-income tenants in there. I'm going to go over the market rents and the current rents here momentarily. This thing is something that he, like, ran back when this was, like, a C-grade neighborhood lower than that, right? Now it's basically an A-grade neighborhood, right? So I think this thing is going to even continue to project up based on all the government incentives uh, to get new houses built, right? All them yuppies that are coming in, right? So there's all your photos. But even though every photo you saw was empty, three of the units – are currently occupied. And this dude, just old timer, ready to get out of the business, retire. <laughs> He's got month to month tenants in there paying five fifty, nine fifty, and then he's got one in there till April paying eight fifty, right? Now here's what market rents are right now, today. The two ones, twelve fifty all day. The one ones one thousand all day. So forty five hundred. Fifty four K, right? Of that fifty four K I anticipate you spending approximately $23, uh, 275 to pay my team to manage this for you and all your normal expenses, fixed and variable expense estimates. You got to pay taxes. You got to pay insurance. People break stuff. People move out. Uh, evictions don't really happen in neighborhoods like this very often, but they do happen in the business, so we account for all that, right? So pure profit, 30725 Now, as far as price goes, I think he's still overpriced. This is definitely worth more than 500 k He's got it at 495 It's worth more than 500 k if you got the market rents. But, dog, <laughs> you don't got the market rents, dude. You got, like, your your long-time, old-time tenants that uh, they're paying, like, you know, rents that they should have been paying 30 years ago, right? Like, come on, bro. You got somebody in there paying 550 dude. Like, you could have rented this for 550 in, like, probably 1990, right? Uh, so because of that, it's not worth over 500 today, and I don't think it's worth 495 I think we could pick it up 450 450. Now, one of the units is empty, so we're going to drop 20 G's into that right off the rip. Get somebody in there paying market rent. The other three tenants, I say we slowly work them up, right? The person paying 550, obviously that's the biggest one. Get them up. The people paying 950 and 850, we don't need to like freak out, right? Shouldn't be in a rush to drop another 20K in their units, right? Because you saw the pictures, those were not high end. We need them to be high end, right? So we want to get the empty unit. That's where we do. That's what we focus on first. We get that one renovated. We get that one ready to rock, bringing in max rent. And then the other ones we work on slowly. We want the money continually coming in, not going out. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind when you guys wire like twenty, forty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars out to Cleveland uh, for my team to do renovations. But like, you need to be paid yourself, right? So it makes no sense to remove income streams, right? Keep collecting that rent. And eventually we might be able to get them up to market rent just based on the location because uh, of how nice it is and how desirable it is without even having to do those turns, right? There's turnovers in the real estate business, right? And they're expensive. So you want to mitigate those as much as possible. Never create artificial turnovers, right? So assuming we can get the other three people up to market rent, which may or may not happen, right? It's possible. Uh, it's unlikely we get all three up to market rent without at least one turnover. It's also, in my opinion, unlikely we have to turn over all three of those units to get them to market rent. I think, you know, maybe like one or two will deflect or the other way, right? So if <clears throat> we do do that, though, right, we'd be looking at a total investment of 470 k 132 and a half out of your pocket. That's 112 for the DP. Down payment, for those of you at home who are not following my abbreviation there. DP, down payment. Not double penetration. That's not what we talk about on this show, folks. No. That's another show. Anyway, 
112500 for the down payment, twenty k in those upfront repairs. That should project you out to a 10.3% cash-on-cash return. 7 cap, making a clear cash flow after mortgage, 13649 You're paying 17900 and I just crossed off that number by circling it. I don't know. You're paying almost eighteen grand to the bank. But that's really going back in your pocket, right? So that's like equity, right? So you got your cash flow, you got your equity. You got three hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars of a loan that them tenants are paying for you, plus the cash flow, plus you're in one of the hottest neighborhoods in town. Which, in my opinion, if anything's appreciating, it's the area where they're tearing down low-income housing at a rapid pace and building freaking five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar single family homes. Folks, do the math. You're insane if you don't pick this up. Not to mention it's the biggest building you can get with the best financing there is. And if I can get you that forty five thousand dollar discount off a list price, we in the money. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.